Welcome to the Burning of the Midnight Amp, where we today are looking into a new band for this YouTube channel, a band called Sparks. And we will, uh, yeah, for a couple of weeks ahead now, look into their debut album, which is also called Sparks, but originally released under the name Half Nelson. Well, this is a completely new band for me. I, uh, For some reason, this is a band that has gone uh, below my radar at... Uh, my years as a music interested human being and i don't think you're alone in that no probably not um became aware of it uh, when you showed me the brilliant documentary that came a couple of years ago sparks brothers by edgar wright yes wonderful documentary highly recommend it and um this is an album i have not heard so i'm listening to this album for the first time today it's a part-time analysis, part-time reaction. Yes, you could, you could call it that. Yeah. It's the first I time. And I will have part-time of both because I think I've heard half the songs and half of the songs will be new right. for me. Mm. I heard the album a lot and I like it. Mm. And, uh, and the first track on this album is a song called uh, Wonder, Wonder Girl. Uh, it's a song by Ron Mile, one of the two brothers in the band, the guy playing keyboard. And um, yeah, we are immediately introduced to Russell's distinct voice in this track. Um, I must admit that this is actually the first song I ever heard from Sparks. And uh, yeah, we also have a podcast series where we have discussed the whole album and a little bit on the history of the, of the band. And uh, I mentioned in the beginning there, the biography uh, author called Dave Thompson, who wrote the biography Number One Songs in Heaven, The Sparks Story, and how he reacted the first time he heard Sparks. I'm not going to repeat all of that here, but basically the, their first reaction was that it was horrible. And then gradually they became aware that they were horribly wrong but I must admit, when I heard this song the first time, I actually had that same reaction. What is this shit? <laughs> this is horrible. And uh, I'm looking uh, forward to it now. Yeah, yeah I had that reaction on, on, on a lot of uh, the early Sparks <laughs> tracks that I heard. But I don't know what, what happened. At some stage, it, uh, it done, suddenly just flipped uh, it, or clicked into place and realized this is brilliant. And I went back listened over to these uh, uh, these first albums and these first tracks and uh, yeah I'm not I can't understand why I had that reaction now <laughs> to be honest it's an acquired taste it I, is uh, it is I would uh, imagine so but I'm uh, uh, very curious now keep an open mind and let's jump into the first track on this album Wonder Girl she was a wonder girl, a song girl, a girl. She was a wonder girl, a song girl, a girl. girl. It was a grand. She was a wonder 
Yes. First track on Sparks. I've been listening a lot to this song and I actually thought it was catchy the first time I heard it, but then I guess I have a bit high threshold when it comes to... I can understand that this is annoying for some people, <laughs> but <laughs> but I <laughs> I just find it it's slightly funny and, and very catchy and there's a nice harmony going on and yeah, nice little pop ditty. Mm. Yeah, I thought that as well. This is a very catchy little song. Got some odd phrasing in the vocal. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. um, yeah, can't uh, put my finger on exactly what it is and how he, he intones the words or if it's some made up accent or something. But uh, yeah, it's, it was interesting. And um, But the music. Uh, very repetitive with this piano. It's not a lot uh, happening. Yeah, it's. A, oh. It's a, I guess it doesn't need to. No, no, no. no it's a punchy drum beat. It's just a, a pleasant little thing. I, I don't <laughs> Short. know. If, yeah, I don't know if the drum beat is like that, <coughs> and uh, if the drum beat is like that in the original because it's no, mixed I, I think in stereo. It is. I think it is, uh, and yeah. it is a very cool drum pattern, very mm. panned. You have a lot yeah, of it is. Mm. Mm. That's uh, one of the things that immediately strikes you when you hear it. Yeah. And of course, the starting here. I mean, you, as I mentioned, you you are immediately introduced to Russell's very distinct voice, the falsetto, mm. the first lines, literally in mm. this this track, and and he's. Famous for his falsetto. Uh, he often sings in a very high-pitched register. So in a way, a, a very classic uh, introduction to, to Sparks. Does he double himself or is someone else's background singer? Mm, I'm not sure, actually. Mm. Uh, I, I do think he doubles himself elsewhere. Mm. So um, there's actually even a comment on that on one of the tracks that, that we'll co come to later. Because mm -hmm. um, when, when the album was remastered um, in the in the sleeve notes, the two brothers, they came with a short comment on, on each of the tracks. So for this uh, track, uh, Russell said that this song probably responsible for getting assigned to a record company, a number one in Montgomery, Alabama. God knows why. <laughs> they were trendsetters in... Alabama. And Ron said, our first top 100 single in the US, our last top 100 single in the US. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is as catchy as it ever was. <laughs> that, that is true? It is actually true in the US, yes. Uh, the single reached number 92 on Cashbox. It never reached the top 100 in, on the Billboard chart. Mm. Well, it's good to know that they opened the album with a commercial track. Yeah, and they save the weirdness for later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean lyrically, not a lot going on. Uh, obviously, a song about uh, Wonder Girl, Supergirl, hmm. uh, silly love song. Yeah, maybe uh, the girl on the Half Nelson cover, the one sitting in the back seat. Yeah, maybe. Maybe that's the Wonder Girl. All the one staring at her. You know, it paints a picture of a remarkable and enchanting woman who captivates those around her, setting trends and leaving a lasting impression on both family, friends and family. And uh, it's, what do you make of that line? She was a wonder to her dad, a self-made man who owned all that he had. And after all, self-made men have daughters who just won't fall. Well, no clue. The, the first, I mean... Aren't daughters always a wonder to their dads, yeah. in a way? But but uh, the last line, <laughs> self-made men have daughters who just want ball. Mm. Seems like she, you know, he was trying to get to get her somewhere, but she's a proper. She won't ball. Yeah, she won't ball. Mm. But it is a trend for sparks. In many of the songs that there is a duality in the texts 
where the meaning is often quite the opposite of what uh, is being said. And uh, it has been indicated that maybe that is the case here as well. Because I, I don't know if you heard it, but before uh, sort of the last repetitions of She Was a Wonder Girl, there's a part there where you only hear the drums. Mm. And just before the, the start, they start singing again, there's a farting sound. Is that the, the, the Wonder Girl farting? And maybe she wasn't so wonderful after all. That sounds like a classy joke. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Who knows? There's actually a, a Finnish version of the song by an artist called Matthews, recorded in 1974. Se only han. Have you heard it? No, I've not found it. <laughs> <laughs> if someone has, they should give us the, <laughs> put it on YouTube and link it below. Mm -hmm. but typically, I mean, the fin Finland, they were... I mean, they seem to have translated just about every song that exists into Finnish. And and of those I have heard, they tended to be often quite um, true to the originals, just sung in, in Finnish. Still, it would be interesting to hear what they would do with a song like this, which yeah. has very distinct drum patterns. And, mm. Yeah, mm. it would be fun to, to hear. Sometimes, somewhere in the deep, deep forests of Finland, someone thought that this would be a hit. Yeah. To finish. Matthews, he thought so. Mm. Well, uh, when you read the lyrics, I guess they kind of give it away that she isn't only a wonder girl. Do me right that this ungodly hour. Yeah. There are some hints here and there. there are. She knew a thing mm. or two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. But her father thought she was still a wonder girl. Wonder to her dad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a classic, or at least so sounds like a classic love. Young love, teenage love mm -hmm. story. Um, I mean, there isn't that much um, uh, documented on, on how often they play these songs live. Uh, obviously, this was played in the early days, but the set list isn't, isn't very well documented. So how frequent this was played is, is not quite known. Mm -hmm. It wasn't played much in their later stage of their career, but in, t in 2022 they brought in this song and it was played quite frequently on that tour, actually, including in, in, in Oslo when they played in Oslo that, that year. And um, But uh, it has... All of the songs on this record has been played live at least once. Uh, in 2008 they had this concept where they concert series where each night they played a new record i think at that stage they had 21 records 21 concerts in a row where they played basically every song they had ever recorded or at least released on an album including bonus tracks and b-sides the, un the encores was a b-side or a bonus track so uh, keep that in mind when we hear listen to the other songs in this yes. track that they actually played this live in 2008 there's also a funny comment in the documentary from one of the band members when they were rehearsing for this. Because <laughs> when you're going to rehearse that many songs, by the time you are kind of album number 10, you're rehearsing, you, you've sort of forgotten what was album number one. Like this all about. <laughs> so. I, th I think you said that on album number two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's Can crazy. you imagine? I mean, 21 albums, there's at least 10 songs mm. in average per, you mm. know, it's 200, 200 songs yeah. around that, maybe? It's amazing. Yeah, now uh, a fun little song to start off the album. So what do you think if you have, are still here? Do you like the song and uh, do you like Sparks overall? Leave us a comment below. Thank you to everyone who was watching us. We will be back with the next track on this album called Fala Fali shortly, in a couple of days. Uh, as I mentioned, we also have a podcast where we are discussing this album and other albums as well. We have a Patreon where you can get early access to all the songs that we are discussing here. Uh, so if you'd like to support us, 
go over there and have a look if you like. My name is uh, Frode. My name is Tron. And my name is Chris. And have a nice, brilliant day.